in 1981, Sinclair Research released the ZX81, which was later branded in the United States as the Timex Sinclair 1000. This unit appears to be mid-project with its existing composite video mod. As it's already opened, let's fix what we need to and review the ZX81. This Issue 1 motherboard has an 8-way and 5-way keyboard membrane connector, 3 3.5mm jacks, 4 integrated circuits, a video out and an edge connector at the top. On board we have 1K of RAM, an 8K ROM for the operating system and BASIC which is housed at the start of the memory map whilst the RAM is at the 16K mark. We've got a Xilog Z80 CPU and a ULA which Sinclair called their computer logic chip. The rear of the motherboard is clean with no bodge wires. However, some of those solder joints look a little worse for wear as is evidenced with this video out modulator. So applying some new flux and solder and cleaning it all up before focusing our attention to the loose capacitors. It was now time to test this ZX81. Due to a faulty keyboard, we needed a replacement. So connecting the two keyboard membrane ribbons, the modified composite out, and the 3.5mm 9V jack input. Success! We've got the K-Prompt. And typing in a test basic program, it all works perfectly. This is an original Sinclair ZX81 16K RAM expansion. Let's clean up this edge connector and plug in the RAM expansion to see if it still works. It doesn't work, so we need to find another way. This is a third party case for the ZX81 with a slot for an edge connector, the internals of the ZX81 with a custom external power supply connection and power switch. Lifting the lid we can see the rear of the keyboard which has some bodge wires, an internal fixed power supply unit a right angled edge connector and the keyboard connections which have some loose wires.
having measured the internal power supply, it was a consistent 9 volts. Removing the right angled edge connector also identified the DKtronics logo. Cleaning the base of this keyboard case provided the opportunity to install some period correct rubber feet. Having identified a modern ZX 81 16K RAM pack kit, it was time to solder the interface board and install the integrated circuits whilst future proofing the ZX81 edge connector. Connecting the 16K RAM expansion to the ZX81's edge connector felt secure to hopefully alleviate what we called back in the day RAM pack wobble. We've got the K prompt. So let's type in a basic program to find out exactly how much memory we've got. It's worked. We've now got two lots of 8K, so 16K, contiguous memory, replacing the 1K from memory address 16384. Locating the ZX81's motherboard onto the base of the case allows us to identify our power cable length. Having confirmed the polarity of our 9 volt input, as the underside solder joints were a little worse for wear, I opted to solder directly to the power input jack. Once again, we've got the K prompt. So let's further secure the soldering with some hot glue, fit and secure the right angled edge connector, and install the modern 16K RAM pack. This project is looking great. Measuring and trimming the internal power cable and preparing for soldering to the on off switch and further cabling to the power input securing the joints with plenty of hot glue it was now time to connect up the internal power supply and the two keyboard ribbons carefully closing it up and securing the base to the lid and applying period correct interface labeling. It was time to reflect on the progress we've made on this project. Connecting our video, external power and ear sockets, it was now time to perform our final test. As a keyboard check, let's type in a simple basic program. As we can see on screen, it's 32 by 24 characters only. However, if we run the plot command, that resolution increases to 4 by 4 pixels. How is that possible? On the keyboard, we can see some predefined graphics, and if we go into graphics mode, we can type these out on screen. Looking at the first eight characters from the character set, we can see these are defined as blocks. On halfway down, those same characters are inverted. So using the plotting command again, we can see this gives the impression of a 64 by 48 block 
resolution. So now we know, let's see if we can display the Retro Relics R on screen using these character blocks. Having created this basic program, which prints out each character block by its decimal value, running this prints the Retro Relics R on screen. To explore how competent ZX81 programmers tackled these limitations in games, we first need to convert these .p emulation files to sound files so we can use on our actual ZX81. And to perform this, we download the conversion program from this link, extract it to your PC, and run the conversion program from the command prompt. Ah, it seems we need a retro backup plan. Having sourced this portable computer running Windows 7, we performed the extract again, which created a .raw sound file. Then, using your audio application of choice, select Import, Raw Data as a Type, not forgetting to perform the detect function before importing. So connecting the 3.5mm sound jack, type load quote quote, press return and play. And we know it's working because it's reflecting the incoming data onto the display. This is because within the ULA, Pin 16 is configured for both the TV, so the display, and tape. So let's load some of the top ZX81 games. And because by default there's no sound, I've added some demo tracks. Before you thought it couldn't get any better, it was discovered you could trick the ULA into thinking it was always drawing the top line of each character, which means we've got a potential resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, thus creating what's called pseudo high res graphics on a stock ZX81. So in this case, we want to draw a smiley face. And we'd do this by referencing an existing 8-bit value already in ROM. Taking a look at this excellent high-res invaders, we note the alien sprites are approximations only. And this was because less than half of all 8-bit graphical representations were available when using the pseudo high resolution method. So what we need to do is to make the graphics more squared. Just like this great retro snake game, which graphically looks crisp 
and clean. However, we can see some graphical artifacts here too, in the borders and within the word lives. In 2016, Paul Farrow released his pseudo high resolution game called Against the Elements. This 16K game running on a stock ZX81 displaying pseudo high res graphics is a remarkable feat of both development and programming. And short of colour and sound, you could be forgiven for thinking it was running on its successor, the ZX Spectrum. But looking back at Paul's website, we can see some colour screenshots, which is possible using this Chroma 81 interface, which, amongst many features, provides 15 attribute colours. Courtesy of Jorf's speedrun, let's take a look at this remarkable ZX81 colour game. <laughs> 